it's Sarah here from Guardian Cane Corsos and we have a really exciting video for you guys today. This is going to be an epic video and probably one of the best ones we've made today and it's all about the history of the Cane Corso. In this video I will be sharing everything I possibly can on the history and facts of the Cane Corso. What's in the name, where the breed descended from, how did the breed get to the USA? What are some of the earliest artifacts that depict the Cane Corso? And much, much more. And we will be doing our best to answer some of the questions that have never before been answered, such as, is American Cane Corsos actually true Cane Corsos, huh? In order to do well moving forward, we have to look back and understand the history as we continue to progress and preserve the breed. Lastly, I want to note, <laughs> males are very needy dogs, uh, no. but lastly I want to note that if you are interested at all in fact checking my information, I have listed all of my sources down below in the comments. Um, really good videos. Everything I highly recommend for you to do your own research because again, as you hear me say, I am not an expert, but I'm here learning alongside with you. So please check out the great sources below. I want to thank everyone that has helped me in making this video by providing their insights, sources, and sharing their pictures from their Facebook profiles that I can share with you on the history of the breed. Thank you guys. The Cane Corso is the Italian name for the breed. It is pronounced Cane Corso. Cane is Italian for dog, and there is really no fact on what Corso stands for. There are a few theories. According to the book Il Cane Corso by Fernando Casolino and Stefano Melfi, here are the three different theories. Theory number one, Perfecto who was a famous biologist as well as the first person to recognize the Corso and call for its recovery, believed that Corso came from the word Corsus, Italian dialect meaning sturdy and robust. Theory number two was published in the Italian Kennel Club magazine in 1979. In an article written by El Genili, he shared that the name could stem from guard dogs, which were called cane de corte courtyard dogs. Lastly, and the third theory, which you will often hear most often, is an interesting theory by a gentleman named Professor Giuseppe. His theory dates the Corso back to Greece, and his belief is that Corso is derived from the Greek word cortis, which means courtyard and closed space, as well as the Latin word cohors, which means protector, guardian, and bodyguard. We will never truly know where the name comes from, but these theories are all very similar, and it's likely to assume that Corso stands for a dog that was definitely guarding the courtyard in its guardian's home, as well as being a protector. Early in the 19th century, it's important to note that dogs were bred based on functionality. Good working dog, bred with good working dog, good hunting dog was bred with good hunting dog. This would ensure that the dogs would continue to reproduce dogs that were needed for the task and could be sold to other farmers for similar purposes. So just wanted to explain that as we jump now into some of the earliest artifacts that we can find on the Cane Corso. One of the most popular dog types believed to be behind the Corso is the Molossoid. Today we will talk about two types of Molossoids. Number one, the Canis Pugnix. That dog was known to be lean and tense and accompanied the Roman troops into battle. This is now believed to be what has descended into the Cane Corso. The second type of Molossoid is the Pugnasus Britannae. It was a powerful guardian of war camps and forts. It is believed that this is the dog that has now descended into what is now known as the Neanderthal, or at least was. There is other theories for where Mastiffs descended from. The English Mastiff group 
in the Gammon documentary believes that English Mastiffs possibly descended from the ancient Alant. It's very interesting to look into the Alant because its uh, temperament greatly is similar to the Cane Corso. However, you will find no literature and no theories and nothing in documentation that this theory is shared for the Italian Mastiffs descendants. Cane Corsos, as uh, well as Molossoid dogs, were also known as Mastinos, Doggos, Alanos, and Molossos, depending on which part of Italy you were in. It is believed the Molossoid was used to create the Rottweiler, St. Bernard, Pero de Pressa, Dog de Bordeaux, and the English Mastiff. Many Corso enthusiasts have searched endlessly but have never been able to turn up enough evidence to really discover the true facts behind our breed's history. There is, however, documented literature as early as the 1400s and 1500s, and much more beyond if you look at the Mastiff, that you can actually see the breed name Cane Corsi written in the literature. These literature pieces mainly refer to the Cane Corsi as a valuable hunting dog that has impressive bite strength, is brave, and has great speed. After war times, the Corso are known very instrumental for helping in the around in Italian farms. They helped with many different tasks and livestock. Corsos were often let loose at night to roam the farm to help protect against thieves and livestock predators. On cattle farms, they could take over most of the duties that cowboys used to perform by watching over the cattle herd and protecting them from predators. Corsos belonging to cattle butchers had the toughest jobs. These dogs often had to accompany herds on very long trips that often required overnight while they were on the way to slaughter. Keeping a cow calm is a tough task and they had to be kept together as well on this journey. It didn't matter if predators came by or thieves that would try and scare the herd. This is why you will hear the Corso considered the Italian herding dog. Corsos also worked with sheep and goat farmers alongside the Abruzzo sheep dogs to help the farmers and protect the herd against predators. Corsos were known for holding prey down by the ear until the owner could make the kill. They were often always seen beside their children to help them in their jobs and tasks as well as seeking companionship. Corsos were even found on swine farms. They had the tough job of finding the sow after she was allowed into the forest to give birth. The Corso would go in and find the sow altered down by the ear so the farmer would not be attacked, but instead could gather the piglets so they could all return safely back to the farm. It is also worth mentioning that Corsos were part of hunts for games such as boars, badgers, bears, lions, and bears. All right, guys, before we go any further, I just want to take a moment to level set. Okay, because you guys know on my channel, I like to tell the truth and I like to keep it real. But unfortunately, the facts about the history of the Cane Corso just aren't, you know, what I thought they would be. They aren't pretty. There's a lot of politics. There's a lot of opinions. And it's really hard to know the truth uh, behind the Cane Corso, especially here in America. You have issues between Italy and the U.S., as you'll see throughout the timeline that we're going to share. You have issues between some of the original people involved with the breed here in the U.S. alone. And there's many of those politics that are still continuing today. And so this video today is going to focus on the facts because that's what's appropriate to include on the history of the Cane Corso. And you're going to see we're just not going to have some answers because we're going to talk about the facts. I am going to make a part two video on my opinion and some other people's opinions that have been shared with me. And I also would like to include your opinion. So if you have a question, if you have a theory on the history of the Corso, 
put it in the comments below. And if you are interested on those opinions, you know, and theories that are floating around, definitely subscribe to our channel um, and hit that notification bell because we will be doing a part two follow up to this video where we talk more candidly about this uh, history of our beloved breed. And if you're new to this channel and this is the first video you're ever watching here, you may be wondering, who the heck are you? I've never heard of Guardian Kane Corsos. I've never heard of this Sarah girl before. Who does she think she is? Why does she think she's qualified to make this video? Well, you're right. I'm not qualified. All I did was research books, whatever is available publicly. I do not have the experience to know this myself. So this is all what I could find publicly and I would love it, love it, love it. If you are an expert, you wanna come make a video, I'm happy to film and do the editing for you. You know, um, we need more experts who have been around the breed for decades to help fill in these blanks for people that really are passionate about the breed and wanna make a difference. So I agree with you, <laughs> but we need to learn. We need to start somewhere. And I am learning alongside everyone else watching. And that's why I'm making these videos to document everything that I'm learning as I go along with the breed. And I think we can all agree, no matter how long you've been around dogs, the Cane Corso, you continuously learn something new all the time. The learning never ends. There is so much to know. Nobody's perfect, no dog is perfect, no breeder's perfect. And so some mistakes were made along the way. You'll make some mistakes along the way. So let's just keep that in mind and keep things polite. Any mean comments will be blocked and deleted, but definitely constructive comments always welcome. So with that, let's get into the history of the recovery efforts of the breed and how they came here to America. In 1957, Professor Giovanni Bonatti published the first article mentioning the need to save the Cane Corso. Through his important work, he was able to garner enough attention that would finally lead to helping save this wonderful breed. It wasn't until the 1970s that the breed recovery work started. In the 1980s, the general public started to learn more about the breed and became aware of the Cane Corso, which increasingly led to the success of the Corso's recovery efforts. In 1983, the SAC, the Society Amatori Cane Corso, is formed by Dr. Breber and five others. The breed standard is published in Dr. Giovanni Ventura's book called Il Cane Corso. In 1984, the SAC contacts ENC, the Italian Kennel Club, to start the process of recognizing the Cane Corso as a breed. Two years later, in 1986, the ENCI assigns Dr. Antonio Morziani to draft a standard for the Cane Corso. Based on the evaluation of about 90 corsos, Bazir and his sister were used as the male and female prototypes for the standard. A year later, in 1987, the official standard of the Cane Corso is approved by the Italian Kennel Club ENCI. In 1988, a survey was done on more than 50 corsos from several locations throughout Italy to compare their resemblance to the newly proposed standard. The NCI was presented with the results. It wasn't until 1988 when the Cane Corso first came to America. Mike Soddle Sr. was a Neapolitan mass breeder from the U.S. He was also the self-appointed president of the Neapolitan Mass Club of America, which was a focal point on neo-breed information and hosting rare breed dog shows. Mike was an accomplished breeder and was also recorded to own two national champion bull terriers. You can see he was featured in this New York Times article for 
his Neo at the Rare Breed shows. In 1998, when Mike was in Italy for family affairs, he came across some dogs that he didn't recognize. They piqued his interest. During his trip, he made a deal with an Italian farmer and imported a large litter of pups. A pregnant dam was flown to the U.S. and was called a rare Sicilian branchero. Unfortunately, after that, the dam had passed away along with multiple puppies. Mike Soddle Jr. is quoted in the Molossal Magazine article saying that there was 13 surviving pups. I cannot figure out what happened to all the puppies, but six out of that litter have been died and are often referred to as a super six. There can be many theories as to why, but I unfortunately do not have any facts as to what happened to the other seven dogs. The only thing that is documented is that some of the original dogs had health issues such as hip dysplasia. Also, in 1998, Mike Soddle drafted his own breed standard for the Sicilian Branchero and registered all his business with his privately owned registry, the FIC, which stood for the Federation of International Canines, not confused with the International FCI registry. I have not been able to find any evidence that this independent registry, the FIC, still exists today. It is widely speculated but not documented that Corso breeders had cross litters with other breeds. With a limited gene pool, this could be understandable given breeding related dogs can cause health and temperament issues. Some of these suspected some of these suspected breeds used in crosses are Rottweilers, Dobermans, Boxers, Shepherds, and Neos. There is no facts or admission that this was ever done in the Corso recovery efforts. Meanwhile, over in Italy in 1990, the ENCI allowed for open book certification for adult corsos that were consistent with the standard. 561 Cane corsos were certified by ENCI approved judges, and in order to be approved, the dogs had to be inspected by two certified ENCI judges. Any pups that were born from two certified parents were eligible for registration in the open book as well as well as any offspring born from these dogs. In 1991, Dog Show was filmed on a visit to Italy from Mike and Ed, and a third litter was born to Alaire Kennels. You can find a link to the film below in the description. In 1992 and 1993, Mark and Tracy Wilson, which were known for DeGuardia Kennels, and Ed and Christy Hodas, which are known for Belmonte Kennels, formed the International Cane Corso Federation, also known as the ICCF in the United States. The Wilson Hodes opened and incorporated a privately owned for-profit registry for the Cane Corso. In 1994, in Italy, the ENCI recognizes the Cane Corso as the 14th Italian breed. In late 1994, it was decided to split up the ICCF. The HOTUS family would maintain control of the privately owned for-profit registry, while the club would be reformatted to be more in line with a typical AKC club, which included elections, constitutions, board of directors, and regional vice presidents. The ICCF also decided to reinstitute the original SOTIL standard for the Cane Corso instead of the ENCI standard. Soon thereafter, ICCF and the SAC in Italy parted ways. The U.S. no longer had any ties to the Cane Corso's country of origin in, in Italy. In 1995, Mark Wilson and others continued to travel to Italy on several occasions. Mark Wilson met with the SAC to try and obtain recognition for the ICCF as the approved American Breed Club. Unfortunately, 
Sometime after that, the Wilsons stepped away from the bank for personal reasons. In 1996, the Cane Corso is presented to FCI, which is the Global Internationally Recognized Dog Registry. It's important to note that the FCI is not the same as the Satili FIC privately owned registry in the U.S. as previously mentioned. In 1997, the SAC sends a letter to the ICCF stating they have no interest in recognizing the ICCF as the American Breed Club for the Cani Corso due to failures to SAC requirements. In 1999, the ANCI removed SAC as the official breed club for the Congresso. It is not mentioned as to why. In 2000, the ICCF revised their standard to more closely resemble that of the FCI, which is the International Kennel Club Standard for the Congresso. In 2003, 2004, the SAC is reinstated by the ENCI as official Italian breed club for the Cane Corso. Also in 2003, the ICCF general membership voted to seek AKC registration. While there are multiple other breed and kennel clubs, the AKC was sought after. To achieve that goal, various delegates worked diligently towards the goal of that recognition. The name of the breed change to the Cane Corso Association of America. Many other registries were also vying for that title, such as the FIC, which was the registered by the Sados, and the SACI, which is the Society Americano Corny Cane Corso Club in International. Lots of acronyms. <laughs> In July 2007, the breed was approved for the AKC miscellaneous class, and it wasn't until three years later in 2010 that the Cane Corso is recognized as a breed by the American Kennel Club. It was the 165th recognized breed for the U.S. In 2015 and 2016, the NCI updates the Cane Corso standard and you can visit their website today to see the differences. Also, in July 2015, the AKC decides to no longer accept ICCF registered Cane Corsos into the AKC registry. All right, so what do you guys think? That is at least eight years of history of the Cane Corso breed and whatever research I could find that's available that's out there. And yes, if you're just as confused as I am, you're still not quite sure on the history of the breed, you're not alone. There's a lot of missing pieces here. A um, lot of controversy, which is why we need a part two where we can talk about some facts uh, outside of the facts to try and fill in those you know, missing pieces with our opinions and theories and some other things that people have shared. Um, and hopefully you guys will share in the comments below. So don't forget to put that comment down there, put that question down there for the follow-up video. If you haven't already, give us a thumbs up for this video. And again, don't forget to subscribe. We have a lot of great content coming your way in addition to the follow-up video. And we will be going into some of the original kennels here in America as well and doing a detailed view on, on them and their dogs. Um, so yeah, lots of great stuff coming your way. If you're interested in that, you know what to do. But yeah, I'm curious to your feedback, what you guys think of this video. And also, you know, please feel free to share this video as well. I do really think it's quite helpful for us all to take a look back as we continue to move forward. And please, everyone, let's do our best to preserve the breed. And I hope you guys are all doing well, staying safe, staying blessed. And until our next video, ciao!